Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting chess game by Paul Morphy. And in this chess game Paul Morphy has the black pieces and his opponent is Felix Sikre, who was an interesting player. He was the first chess champion of Cuba. And Felix Sikre became the chess champion of Cuba in 1860 and he lost his title in 1862 to Celso Zupait. And Celso Zupait also played with Capablanca when Capablanca was a chess prodigy when he was a child. Interesting, isn't it? But anyway, Felix Sikre was the first chess champion of Cuba. And in this chess game, of course, Paul Morphy made a visit to Havana, Cuba because of the civil war in his country. And when he was at Havana, Cuba, he played a chess game with Felix Sikre but this was a blindfolded simultaneous exhibition by Paul Morphy. Paul Morphy was blindfolded and Felix Sikre was not just his only opponent. He played with some other chess players as well when he was blindfolded. And Morphy was not just blindfolded but he was also playing with the black pieces in this chess game. So long story short, Paul Morphy went to Havana, Cuba because of the civil war in his country and he played with the Cuban chess champion blindfolded. So let's check out what happened in this chess game. Morphy's opponent, Felix Sikre, starts the game with pushing the pawn, who was the first official chess champion of Cuba. e5 by Morphy, knight to f3, knight to c6, and we see the Spanish game. What was the response of Paul Morphy in this position? Well, Morphy played the Morphy defense. This is his own defense, a6 by Paul Morphy. Even today, in the 21st century, this is the most common reply. It is not much, of course, this is move 3, but we see the deep understanding of Paul Morphy, so this is one of the best reply. And Black is asking the question to White, what do you want to do with the bishop? So, this is what Sikre did with his bishop. He is keeping the bishop, which is fine. Knight to f6, d3, bishop to c5, and Sikre castled b5, bishop to b3, d6, c3. So far so good. And now, developing the bishop, exchanging the bishops. And now Morphy castled. Knight from b to d2, d5, by Paul Morphy, exchanging the pawns. And now attacking the e pawn. Attacking the e pawn, defending with the queen and bishop to e6. Exchanging. And now, as you can see, Morphy captured back with the queen. Not just developing the queen, but also targeting the weakness. Maybe attacking with the rook and with the queen. In the future, we see knight to e4. And this was actually the first weak move of white. Why this move was a weak move? Well, because of this move, Morphy pushed the pawn and this is giving Morphy the tempo. Going back and queen to d8 and b3. Actually, white is still okay, but... Black is slightly better. Morphy went back with the queen because he wants to relocate the queen. Morphy pushed the pawn. And Morphy is pushing his pawns from the king's side. He is throwing his pawns to his opponent. And king to h1 but Morphy is pushing the pawn. He is throwing his pawns at his opponent. Defending the knight and queen to g5. And now, this is why Morphy go back. Because he was planning an attack from the king's side. Rook from a to d1, knight to e7, queen to d2, and now, again, targeting the pawn, so Secret thought that his pawn is a weak pawn, so he pushed the pawn, Morphy pushed the pawn again, from the queen side this time. But in this position, as you can see, this pawn is pinned, if you capture the pawn, rook takes queen, so e4, exchanging the queens, but this is losing for white, Morphy captured the pawn. Doubling the rooks and Morphy captured the pawn. Well, of course, in this position, if you take the pawn, you can take back. And black is a pawn up. So, doubling the rooks. Secret says you can take the pawn. If you take, I will take your rook. But Morphy this time takes the f pawn. Takes the e pawn with the f pawn. F takes on e4. And also he is threatening to push the pawn. Forking the rook and the knight. So this is why knight takes on e4 but now bishop to d5 and this is losing for white. Simple, elegant and beautiful. White is losing. 
After thinking very hard, this is what Sikre did. And then Morphe captured the knight. Bishop takes on e4 and white resigned. Why did Sikre didn't even want to defend the knight? In this position, if you defend the knight, can you see what happens? This is actually a nice exercise. Then simply capturing the pawn, attacking the rook, defending the rook and then pushing the pawn, defending the rook and then capturing the pawn. Bishop takes on g2, king takes on g2 and then rook takes on d3. What a crushing chess game by Paul Morphy once again. Morphy's pieces at perfect place. They are working perfectly together. Flawless, beautiful, simple, elegant and instructive once again by Paul Morphy. What an incredible chess game. A beautiful chess game by Morphy. So in this position this is why going back with the knight is not a good idea. Also moving the knight to f2 would not make any difference. In this position white is losing. So this is why not even moving the knight and losing the piece and resigning. This is what happened in the chess game. So in this position, I also want to show you what happens after retreating the knight. If d takes on c3, if let's say rook to c2, then it is very simple. Bishop takes on g2, king takes on g2 and then rook takes rook and this is all over for Sikre once again. Morphy captured the knight and white resigned when he was blindfolded. Interesting, isn't it? This was 1862 when Morphy made his first visit to Havana, Cuba. In 1864, Morphy made a second visit to Havana, Cuba and once again, he played with the former chess champion of Cuba. This time, as I said, he lost his title in 1862. Sikre lost his title at that time, at this time. And in his second visit, Morphy, I believe, was, he was again, I believe, blindfolded against Sikre. Also, for the records, Morphy also played with the slave of Sikre. Sikre actually had a slave, which is not cool, of course. But back then, slavery was legal. And who was a black man? And Morphy played with the slave of Sikre as well. But Morphy was not supporting slavery, so Morphy played with Sikre's slave in equal terms. It was an equal chess game. And it was also interesting. More, one of the opponents of Morphy in this blindfolded simul was also Sikre's slave. Because of the ongoing civil war in the United States, Morphy made a second visit to Havana, Cuba in 1864. And he played with Sikre once again. And I hope I will show you that game as well. So this is the last position of this chess game. And I hope to see you next time with more chess games like this in the future. So thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.